yeah. Trying to make it all moody in here. What up, AFAM? Kitty here with the Tola Visuals, and today we're gonna to be talking about Suri anamorphic lenses. These are lenses I've talked about in the past before, so if you haven't seen those, definitely check out those links down below. But I don't wanna give you like another boring focal length video. I wanna just kinda of chat with you guys and talk about like my mindset on why I would choose different lenses in which scenario, and I'm gonna give you examples. The space I rented for this video was super epic. I chose this space because it had a very nice wide area. It looked like an art gallery and this artist lives there and it's her living space, it's a loft. A good recommendation when shooting with these anamorphic lenses is to shoot in some place that has a wide space because these are crop sensor lenses. And the widest lens they have is a 24 milliliter, 24 milliliter, milliliter? <laughs> Was it a liquid? and the widest lens they have in the set is a 24 millimeter, which unfortunately I do not have to test today, but I did have my 35. For those who are new and who don't really understand, let me break it down for you real quick. So anamorphic lenses, first of all, the lens design is different from what you would normally see. Ooh, look at how beautiful that is, first of all. To simplify it, these essentially take your image and squeeze it into the frame. So then when you do post-production, you could de-squeeze it and you get this like widescreen look. And back in the day, even still now, anamorphic lenses for movies are like, they cost as much as a car. Like people don't even buy it, they have to rent it. And you can rent it now, but of course, why would you rent it? You would have to rent like a cinema camera and if you just wanna play with some anamorphic lenses on your Sonys and do a vlog, you can't really do that with like a $40,000 anamorphic lens. So that's why these come in handy because they are affordable and you could shoot these with your mirrorless cameras now. The mounts that come with it are E-mount, that's what I've been shooting personally. You could also get a Z-mount for Nikon and Micro Four Thirds. So I shot mine on my Sony for this video. To break it down further, not only is their widescreen a characteristic of anamorphic lenses, but you have a few other visual elements, which is why people like to use these. Number one, they have that beautiful blue horizontal flare that I know you've seen, but maybe you couldn't pick it out sometimes. It tends to happen a lot with like sci-fi movies, like Star Wars. You'll get a glimpse of it here and there if you really pay attention. This usually happens when like direct light is pointed at the lens. That's when the blue flare is the strongest. You could definitely do it with some like After Effects or plugins possibly, but there's nothing more boss than saying, I shot that in camera, including the blue flare. You do have an interesting shape in their bokeh. Typically with other lenses, you get a nice circular look, but with anamorphic lens, specifically the more telephoto lens, like their new 75 1.8 that we have here, you get more of this oval shape. It just looks like a bunch of mangoes. So you want some mango bokeh, go for that 75. And the reason why this happens, without going into too much detail, is that when you squeeze the image, the background sort of elongates, so when you de-squeeze it, your subject won't be an oval, because things in focus usually tend to look normal after you de-squeeze it, but all the stuff in the background will remain elongated, including your bokeh balls, or bokeh mangoes. And last but not, and last but not least, a characteristic and the last characteristic, because these are prime lenses, you get that shallow depth of field. All these ones here are f1.8, so you get that nice buttery separation from the background and your subject. So let me show you some test examples of focal lengths here. Of course for the wides, I shot with my 35 millimeter here. And for 35 millimeter, it is not the widest that you can go, but it is a nice look. So this I would use to show a lot of the landscape or if I have people in the frame, I like to show their whole body. Walking around within the space, this is good for establishing shots to let your audience know like where you are and what this location is. It's really good to tell your audience like what setting we're at so we're not so confused if it's just close-ups close-ups, close-ups. Moving on, we have the, woo! Moving on, we have the beautiful 50 millimeter here. 
Oh, let me flip it. Moving on, we have the beautiful 50 millimeter here. It's pretty versatile. I like to do 50 millimeter for more medium shots. So for medium shots, you can kind of get this look on a subject if you're shooting people. And this brings you more into the frame. It's not so wide, but it still feels like you're part of the scene, but not like up close and personal. Maybe you're like eavesdropping on someone's conversation. You're standing over their shoulder, but it gives you enough information on like where the subject is in the room and the space without being too close. Speaking of too close, I like to get all up in there. And that's what the 75 millimeter, which is their newest lens is all about. I love a good telephoto lens. You know why? Because I like to get up in people's business sometimes. So this is good for like really close ups on actors and subjects. And this is helpful for a part of your story when you wanna see their emotions and really like get into their personal space and kind of understand them as a character or person and really feel what they feel. And that's what these telephoto lenses are really good for. You can also use this for B-roll, really close up B-roll shots to get the texture and the detail and just get that nice separation from the background, which is really nice too. Because these are a 1.8 f-stop, you get major separation. They each have their own characteristics as well. So it's hard for me to pick which one I like more depending on the shot and what I'm trying to show. What else? Let me double check, we're still recording. So yes, let's see some example shots and I'll just quit talking for a minute. Let me know what you guys think. What was your favorite shot? I would love to know. I know I'm like not the best actor or model, but this is what you get <laughs> when you come to my channel. For this shoot, I also borrowed Josh's manual slider because I wanted to get some nice movement, which is great with these anamorphic lenses for sure. But another thing is because they don't autofocus, I probably would not throw these on a gimbal unless you could manually focus it or you got a focus puller with you. That would be my recommendation if you wanted some camera movement. Obviously you could see the size differences here. They're all different. <laughs> Let's put it from shortest to tallest for those that need to know different height levels. And I'm pretty sure they would be different weight as well. The 75 definitely feels heavier than the 50, but they're not like overbearingly heavy. And the entire lens is made out of metal. Listen, I've been doing this a lot lately. I don't know why. They're gorgeous. They feel gorgeous. The focus ring is so smooth. The aperture ring is smooth. It's not clicky, it just keeps going. Here's all their beautiful insides. <laughs> oh yes. Whoa. <laughs> Hold on, let me do this one. We gotta find the wide holes, a little wider, wider hole there. Gotta be like here. There we go. Oh. <laughs> Should this be the thumbnail? Yo, what up, AFAM? Key here to talk about anamorphic lenses. <sighs> so, this is my time to go. Definitely check out my other videos on the anamorphic lenses. I talk in more detail about how you should have a monitor so you can see it properly because it will look squeezed. If you don't really know anamorphic and you kind of just put it on your camera and you just be so confused like, um, that's not what it's supposed to look like. You have to get a monitor to de-squeeze it and then also in post-production you have to de-squeeze it. It's not gonna just automatically do it for you, unfortunately. Which lenses I would use for certain situ situations I know this is a short video, but hopefully this gave you some more insight on which lenses I would use in certain situations. Hopefully you guys found something that maybe would suit your shooting style as well. I would just recommend for any video shooter, film maker, you definitely have to shoot on anamorphic lenses, at least once in your life. Like this is classic Hollywood cinema 
visual style and you don't know until you actually get to use it yourself. This is Kitty signing out. You do you fam and I'll see you when I see you. Find me on IG and TikTok and Twitch. I'm everywhere now. I'm done. That's what I would recommend. Definitely shoot on an app. Definitely shoot. Definitely shoot. Definitely shoot on an app. I'm getting tired. My brain's done. Definitely shoot on the animal, anamorphic. Anamorphic? Anamorphic's not even that much of a tongue twister. I don't know why I can't say it.